Good morning, good morning. It is Monday, the 25th of March, 2024. I'm Graham Hughes. This is Morning Brew on Labour Social. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the EU a little bit. There's, I mean, there's always loads of stuff to talk about, but I want to talk about the prospect of us rejoining the EU and what it might look like um, as a bit of a roadmap. And I know this is something that we've discussed on this channel before um, and sometimes quite at length uh, on, on various shows like The Agenda and The Labour Social. But um, what I wanted to go through today and go through with you, so obviously feel free to drop into the chat and say whatever you, your opinion is of this. This is essentially the roadmap that I can see for us rejoining the EU and strap in because it's going to be a long and bumpy journey. So first of all, the first thing that needs to happen more than anything else for us to rejoin the EU is Labour need to win the next election, but not just win it, the Tories must be destroyed. Which means that unlike if I was a Labour candidate, I can say this because Labour social is actually independent of the Labour Party, I'm going to be pushing for tactical voting. Um, I would like you watching this and your, you know, tell your friends, tell your family, tell the people in your street to vote for the candidate who is most likely to beat the Tories. That might be the SNP. It might be Lib Dems. It might be Plaid Cymru. It might be the Greens. Um, or it might be Labour. It's probably going to be Labour in a lot of constituencies. But you're going to see a lot of blue wall constituencies for the Tories uh, going. And it's not just about punishment for causing all this carnage and all this suffering that the, the Tories have, have, have foisted upon this country. We're the most miserable country in the world now next to Uzbekistan, where the government takes a really unhealthy interest in everything you do in Uzbekistan. In Uzbekistan, you can't change money from Uzbek sum into US dollars without permission from the government. You can't leave the country, come back in again with anything without declaring literally everything in your backpack or in your suitcase down to the toothbrushes. Like, seriously, you, you're not allowed to have couch surfers come and stay at your place because they need to stay in a government-approved hotel that gives out little chits of paper that you have to have. Your little, you, you have to have your little chits uh, and you might get caught on the Tashkent underground by the police, you'll say, oh, oh, you, you, you tourists, where's, where's your things where you've been, to tell us where you've been staying? You get two days grace after that. No staying with friends and family. No, 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 no. You'll get deported if you don't have these little slips of paper from the hotel. And that we're behind, we're, we're just a few points above them. In fact, we are below them when it comes to motivation. And the UK at the moment, and just talking to my friends and family and, and talking to people, not just in the chat, but also on, on Discord and st stuff. It's really difficult. It's really, really difficult. Everyone that I know is struggling. Everyone. And, and it, it, it's one of these things that sort of mental health problems are usually exacerbated or even caused by financial woes. Financial troubles, the 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 worry that you're not going to have enough money to pay the bills at the end of the month, which a lot of us now have. We didn't used to have that. I didn't. Not before not before the Tories. But it's not just that they need to be punished. It needs to be a wholesale rejection of everything that the Tories ever stood for in the last fourteen years. An absolute repudiation of all of that. Throw it in the bin. All that stuff was bad. That's the narrative that we need going forward because a big part of what the Tories did to us in the last 14 years was Brexit. A project that derailed the country's economy. A project that tore families apart. The, a project that drove many, many people into mental health problems that they didn't have before. It curtailed the horizons of an entire generation who can no longer go and live and work around Europe. There's so much bad stuff wrapped up in Brexit. It is an absolute unmitigated disaster. It hasn't done any of the stuff that they said it was going to do. It hasn't improved trade. It hasn't brought down immigration. 
it hasn't i don't know what else they wanted to do with it um Suck one to the EU. Made made all the other EU countries fall like dominoes. And that's it. No more EU. Ha 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 ha. We destroyed it. Love Europe. Hate the EU. Yeah. Well, as the vast majority of the you know, sensible countries in Europe are, uh, are part of the EU, if you are anti-EU, you're pretty much anti-Europe. It's like saying, I'm not, I, I love North America, but I hate the USA. I'm like, well, that's a huge chunk of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you've got to go along with the continent and you're saying, well, I'm going to dismiss that bit. And you know what? Mexico and, and Canada, I'm not, I'm not really fond of them either, but <clears throat> it doesn't make any sense. So that's got to be the first thing. The Tories have to be absolutely demolished, demolished in the next general election whenever it comes I, I wanted it sooner rather than later i mean maybe it was just out of hope that we we thought that it actually happened in in may there was a chance that it could happen in may and put us out of our misery uh, a lot of us have lives that we would like to be getting on with that don't involve going on the internet every day and going oh god what now at what the tories have whatever stunts they've pulled this we, sorry, day, this hour, this minute, this second. So that's the first thing. Now, Labour get in. Now, Labour have been very cagey about talking about Brexit. Even people we know, like Stella Creasy, who are very, very pro-EU, talking to them, they get it. They understand why the leadership are so reticent to talk about rejoining the EU or Brexit at all, because it's a toxic issue. Nobody likes being told that they made a mistake. No one likes being told that they were wrong. And let's face it, Brexit was the biggest ego project that this nation has ever undertaken. It was all about ego. I mean, you could you could argue maybe, maybe World War I was a little bit about ego. Yeah, it certainly was. World War II might have been a little bit about ego. But the, the, there were also other serious political uh, geopolitical circumstances to those wars. Um, whereas there was no reason for Brexit at all. It was 100% ego. And now you're telling people who have pinned their colours to the mast, the correct colours, can't change the colours, but well, you can if you're Boris Johnson, but not if you're Nike. You're telling them that they're wrong. And their, 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 their sacred dream of being an independent nation that doesn't have anyone telling us what to do apart from, I guess, America and China and Russia. Yeah, apart from those guys, uh, yeah, no one tells us what to do. Um, it, ha it hasn't come into to fruition, and, and, and they're feeling a little bit betrayed at the moment, the, at the Brexit betrayal. And then we're standing on the other side of the bank going, uh, the river bank, not the money bank, uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, saying, well, we told you so, which probably isn't helpful, but it's helpful for me. <laughs> it's helpful for us to go, yeah, we did say it was going to be awful, and it was awful. So maybe next time, listen to us. Maybe next time, my Brexit voting friends, maybe you should listen to the people who are saying that it will be a disaster or, you know, there's a problem with it. You know, maybe people who have a degree in politics. Maybe people who have the experience of traveling to every country in the world. I don't know. Maybe you should listen to them rather than your dickhead uncle on Facebook. Oh, oh the... Mail, the newspaper, the Daily Mail, which is basically your racist uncle on Facebook. So Labour's not talking about the EU too much, but it has been doing stuff in the background. It has, um, Keir Starmer's had meetings with uh, Emmanuel Macron, the, the president of France. One of the reasons why uh, those meetings have taken place, he's also met uh, EU counterparts uh, in the lead up to him hopefully becoming uh, prime minister later this year. Um, which is, there is talk of an outer orbit of the EU. It's not quite the single market, it's not quite the customs union, but it's a halfway house. It won't cover every goods and, every bit of goods and services. But we could join that so long as we bring in the buzzwords that you're going to hear probably quite a lot in the next five years, which will be regulatory alignment. At the moment, we are free to make substandard products and bring in hormone-injected beef from uh, Australia or whatever it is, right? Uh, whereas that's not allowed in the EU. GM food is not allowed in the EU. Something I disagree with, by the way, and I probably won't make any friends saying this, but I don't have a problem with genetically modified food. We've been genetically modifying our food for centuries. That's why a, a carrot that you eat looks nothing like a wild carrot. Uh, that's why the cabbage that you eat 
looks nothing like a wild cabbage uh, it, it, because we've been modifying it through cultivars for centuries. I mean, dogs. If you want to talk about genetic manipulation, the other GM, look at dogs. Look at what humans have done to the Asiatic grey wolf. We made pugs out of them. We took a wolf and we made a pug. Yeah, but you know, GM crops, oh, we can't have that, it's dangerous. And you get this conflation of the green movement, which needs to be fighting against climate change at the same time saying, well, no, but we don't want these crops that create a better yield and also improve the amount of iron that people are getting in developing nations, which is probably really needed right now. I don't have a problem with it. But the EU has a rule, which I think is fairly sensible, that if you have a food, foodstuff, medicine, something that you put into humans, put into people, you have to prove that it's safe before you do so. And I guess the, the jury's still out for GM, I guess. It's just been years now, so it should have been sorted out years ago, but whatever. In America, you can make anything you like, you can literally sell shit sandwiches, and you're all right until someone sues you for dying after eating one of your shit sandwiches. I, I, I like the European way of doing things a lot better. But if we backheel some of the crap trade deals that we've got with the likes of Australia and New Zealand and other places, uh, these, these milky toast trade deals that are going to give us 0.0035% growth over 10 years. Like it's, it's you know, the, the, the latest Marvel movie would add more to the economy if we made it in the UK rather than uh, this deal deal that we've got where they, you know, we, we, they can import they can export to us um, up to 20,000 tonnes of beef a year you know, from Australia, and uh, we can't send them anything. Mm. Um, uh, one Angry Pagan, two pounds super chat. Thank you very much. I'm just going to quickly do a couple of super chats here. Uh, realignment, then rejoin. It took years to leave as is. Yes, I agree. Um, I mean, I am getting a little bit impatient, but I've come to understand that we can't be, you know, saying... Yes, we're going to rejoin tomorrow. Uh, Emma Price, thank you very much for the five pound super chat. Did you see the interview with Jess Philip Sunak who postponed the local elections? No, please, no. Yeah. So basically, um, there was an interview with Jess Phillips. Uh, I think it was time. Was it Times Radio? But in it, she said that Sunak might postpone the local elections in May because he can, mm. uh, because he knows it's going to be an absolute disaster. Um, the, the hope is that if he does postpone them until June, maybe he could have the general election in June along with um, this, uh, what's it called? Um, stupidity. Uh, the the, the, uh, the local elections and the, the general elections. Um, but yeah, uh, they're just drawing it out now. And you know my theory, said it before, I think that Sunak's just hanging on to get his memorandum of understanding with the Indian government to have a UK Anglo-Indian trade deal at some point. Um, whether that's going to help ha happen, I, I don't know. Sorry, UK deal, not Anglo. Anglo means just England. So obviously everyone, everyone in the UK. Um, so the reason why I'm talking about Rejoin is this weekend I was at the National Rejoin March, one of them in Liverpool, along with Femi and Madalena Kay. And um, we were we, obviously we were talking and I haven't really had a chance to sit down and have a really good chat with Maddie and, and Femi for a, a, a while. I mean, we've done uh, we've had discussions online, but it's not quite the same as sitting down somewhere in a cafe and, 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 and chewing the fat. Um, but I think we're all in sort of a broad agreement that the road back to the EU is is a long and hard one. So where are we now? So we get the Tories out, then we get regulatory alignments. And that allows us to join this new outer orbit of the EU, which will include places like Moldova and Ukraine and possibly Serbia, possibly Bosnia, possibly Montenegro, places that are looking to join the EU. Um, and that would allow us certain access to the single market uh, in a way, the common market, uh, in a way that uh, will help our imports and exports. We have uh, had in, in down south, there was a depot that was built to deal with all of this, um, the, the, the influx of paperwork that we're going to have from all of the imports coming in from the EU that we would have to check. And uh, they spent millions making this Portsmouth, was it? Someone look it up. Uh, it, it, was, it was down south and they spent millions building this thing and they're going to demolish it. 
at the cost of millions more. Do you know why? It's not that they're not going to do the checks. Oh, yeah, well, the checks are coming in this year. It's just that EU exporters are just not sending stuff to the UK. It's as simple as that. And that's why you're seeing prices for everything going up. And then when you you, you see these Tories and Brexiters on the TV and they're asked, you know, why is the cost of living so high? Oh, it's, 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 uh, why is inflation so high? Why, why are interest rates so high? Oh, it's because of the war in, 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 in Ukraine and COVID. Well, every other country's had to put up with that as well. So, I mean, why aren't they in the same dire financial straits as we are? No. Economic growth for 17 years. 17 years. No economic growth. So, okay, so we have new um, alignment and we're part of this outer orbit of the EU. This is going into the 2029 election. Don't, don't forget the the uh, the deal, our exit deal with the EU, our trade deal with the EU is up for renegotiation, or at least part of it are in 2026. So that'll be undertaken by the Labour government. Uh, hopefully, if all goes well. If all goes to, according to plan. Um, so 2029, I would expect to see on the um, on the um, in in the in the Labour manifesto for that year, I think, or they might do it early. Actually, they might do it in twenty twenty eight. Depends what the economy does, but I would expect to see something about PR. And with that, I could see some kind of um, strengthening ties with Europe. You know, bolstering our, our trade with Europe, something like that, something vague enough to get that through. Oh, something that has to happen before then. Get ahead of myself. Press regulation. Press regulation is so important. It's as simple as this. You're not allowed to put opinion on the front page and you're not allowed to lie. If you lie on the front page of your newspaper, you have to retract the lie every day for two weeks on the front page of your newspaper. That's the rule. Oh, you don't like that. Well, sorry, mate. That, that's, that's the rule. Just If you want to avoid it, don't lie. Can't do the time? Don't do the crime. As Richard Little John and his friends like to say. Richard Little, John, John of uh, I Hate People Who Work From Home fame, um, who works from home in, from Florida, I think. I, I hate people who live in other countries the the ones they were born in. So then we'll have the second term of the Labour government, hopefully, as long as the wheels don't come off or some, you know, whatever tragic happens, like Trump gets in in, in November. <laughs> I mean, that's if Trump wins the election in November, then all bets are off. Forget about any of this, what I'm just talking about. But... Um, We'll go into the 2030s with an entire generation of young people who can look back at, you know, in the history books of what life was like when we were in the EU and the opportunities and the freedoms that they had and the fact that those freedoms were taken away from them by a group of people, by then a huge chunk of whom are no longer going to be with us. So you're going to see the... The, the 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 willingness to get stronger and stronger alignment with the EU coming in. I could see in that second term, second Labour term, uh, perhaps rejoining the single market proper and then the customs union as well, you know, at, at that point. Now, here's the thing. As soon as we do rejoin the single market, which I think is inevitable, given the state of our economy at the moment, once we do that, it is, uh, we're on a rail. There is no way that we can deviate from the, the rejoining the EU. Why? Because even the people who hate the EU with every fibre of their being, because they were told to by the right-wing media, they didn't give a shit about the EU in 2010, but, you know, Farage turned up and said, oh, this is the worst thing ever, you need to care about this. You know, same thing they did with trans people in 2016, you know, up to that point, trans people existing wasn't a problem, then suddenly it was because we were told it was, and now it's the worst thing ever to some people. They wake up in the middle of the night, cold sweats. Oh my God, I can't believe the EU exists. Oh my God, I can't believe trans people exist. You didn't care a few years ago. Literally, you never even thought about it. You never gave it the second the second thought. Yeah, but now it's really important. Why is it really important? I don't know, I was told. Okay. But yeah, even the people who are diehard Brexitters, you know, <laughs> 
they will have to concede that they would rather be a rule maker in the EU than a rule taker as part of the single market, but not being able to have their say in any of the rules and regulations that govern that single market. So there's that. So uh, 2034, maybe, um, we might have a, a, a third referendum on the EU. We had one back in 75. That was three quarters for, sorry, uh, two thirds for rejoining the EU. Uh, sorry, for staying in the EU, for remaining, re remain one in 1975. Then we had the 2016 fraud referendum, which uh, Russia meddled, foreign power that hates us, meddled in that election, uh, uh, fraud referendum. And um, yeah, the result was 52-48. Now, I think that if we go back into the EU, um, and I, I feel this way, way about Scottish independence as well, if we're going to have a referendum on it, and I hate referendums, I'd rather never have one again because they're so freaking divisive. They split up friends and families and neighbours and colleagues like nothing else. Like, to, you get a say in this. You know, you put you put an X on that piece of paper now. Like, That's going to change something. And then you have to, we all have to live with the consequences of that choice. I think it needs to be a two-thirds majority. Which I think by then it will be. The, the drumbeat of wanting to get back into the EU by then will be deafening. It will be absolutely deafening. Not just because of the horrors that we've had to live through over the last you know, uh, eight years and the following eight years you know, going forward. But also because, like I say, a lot of the people who voted for this thing aren't going to be with us anymore. And a lot of people who resolutely did not vote for this thing, i.e. everyone born this century, will be, you know, even more and more of them will be coming online. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the roadmap. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's not out there. It, it's not saying that we will rejoin tomorrow. I don't think that we will, but I'm, I'm a hundred percent confident that we will rejoin in my lifetime, um, because it would be absolute folly not to, but in order to do that, certain things need to be in place. The Tory party needs to be destroyed. And the, 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 the newspapers need to just um, shut up and go away. Oh, also, by the way, with press regulation, also we need social media regulation as well. It's really, really important because it's a wild west out there. Oh my God, Twitter is just a cesspool. Anyway, um, good God, sir. Not burnt crumpets, says Captain Bart Roberts. Thanks for that important contribution, Captain. Um... To burn one crumpet is important. Why is everyone talking about crumpets? That makes me want crumpets now. Chatty Rat, associate member proposals, if they get any traction, require EU treaty change, which means a referendum in Ireland. Yeah, um, fair enough. <laughs> and this is one of the lies. I mean, we could just, I could spend hours talking about all the lies they told during the Brexit campaign. And one of the big ones was like, oh, well, if, if they don't get the result that they want, they'll keep doing it until they get the result that they want. Um, and they refer to the rejection of the Lisbon Treaty uh, in Ireland. And then they had another referendum where they accepted it. Yeah, because they changed the treaty. The, the Irish people had a particular concern about the treaty as was, so they, they changed it. That was it. That, that's what happened. And then they went, you do you want this one? And they went, yeah, okay. It's like a negotiation just with millions of people. You know, and they go, do you want this? Do you, do you want to you know, I'll, I'll give you five grand for it. And they're like, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I want six grand. Okay, well, we'll go back. We'll, we'll renegotiate and then we'll come back with a better offer. All right, okay. Yeah, we'll give you five and a half grand. Okay, deal, deal, done. That's, a, that's the way, that's the way it's worked since forever. But now according to the Brexit Ultras, that, that, that shows duplicity. How dare they ask you to check this again after they've changed it in your favour, after you asking them to change it. The bastards. Um, Plum both, please. Um, Sarah says, my mum wasn't going to vote, but once I explained how important it is and what to state she's changed her mind, it would be voting Labour. Good. Uh, that's good news, Sarah. Look, um, there's going to be people out there who hate Labour and hate Keir Starmer and go, oh, he's the worst person ever. What, what do you hate about him? Do you know what it's like? It's like the previous leader when you say, what do you love about him? And it was just, it turned into the Wizard of Oz song. It was like, because, 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 because because of the wonderful things he does. And it's like, can you tell me what they are? Like, what actually is it that, you know, you love about this man or with Starmer? What is it that you hate about him? And you get people that go, oh, he's a liar. I'm like, what's he lied about? Well, he said he was going to do all these things when he, when he got into power. And I was like, yeah, when he gets into power. And also, Labour's not a dictatorship. 
runs as a democracy and within itself as well. And he can't just do stuff without the permission of the, well, the, the consensus of the shadow cabinet and the rest of the party and the membership, possibly, and the trade unions, possibly. And the party has voted to bring in PR. So it's something that they're going to have to look at in the next parliament. Do it. PR, fantastic. Do that. Bring it in, hopefully. It'd be great if they had that for the next general election. I don't think that will happen. I think it will probably be put into the manifesto as something that will happen if Labour win the next election after this one. Um, but uh, can't come quickly enough. Mm. Johnny Copperhead. Thank you very much for the £2 super chat, my friend. Uh, that's very kind of you. Um, all this talk of crumpets. Benny Hill show, anyone? Indeed. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why everyone's talking about crumpets in the chat. But um, the, 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 the fact that um, people don't like Starmer or people don't like Labour, if they are that way motivated, then I think the way to get people to possibly vote for Labour, you know, hold their nose and vote for Labour, is the promise of destroying the Tory party. I think that that is a way that cuts through as punishment for what they did or what they've done, what they continue to do, which is to ruin this country in so, so many ways. Uh, soundbite politicians. Well, I mean, you know, to be fair, they always wear soundbite politicians. We used to fight them on the beaches. That's a hell of a soundbite. Uh, what, why do you complain about people uh, about it being so hard to get into the EU? Have you ever tried outside, travel outside it before? Lots of countries need visas, never mind, just a passport like the EU wants now. Yeah. I, 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 why, why are you saying you people? I've been to every country in the world. I know what it's like to get visas for places like Angola and Saudi Arabia and Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. You know, I know that the EU is absolutely unique in the world as this is open areas, open borders, where you can have not just trade and commerce, but you can go and live and work anywhere within the EU so long as you're an EU citizen. That citizenship has been taken from us. My citizenship has been taken from me. We talk about how awful it is when someone has their British citizenship taken from them. And especially if they're, you know, accused of being a terrorist or whatever. Oh, suddenly we wash our hands of them. No, 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 no nothing to do with us. That's they're, they're a foreign person. We, we, we don't want them anymore. And you think, oh, that's, that's, that, that was pretty awful, losing your citizenship. Well, that, that's exactly what the powers that be in this country have done to us. Um, and they haven't taken away from themselves, by the way. Don't forget Farage. Both his children have EU passports and he has more than enough money to go and live and work anywhere he wants in Europe. Whereas we, the rest of us, we don't. And like I say, I mean, I, I, I was uh, making travel videos all over Europe and then suddenly Brexit happened and the offers just dried up because they were like, we don't really want to work with British people anymore because it, it, it's too much of a headache. So, you know, if you're Irish and you've got the gift of the gab and, you know, you, you're good at presenting stuff, hell, get your name down on the list. Quids are in around Europe. But that, that door's been shut to me. The door for people doing shift work, uh, not shift work, seasonal work, in, in in the ski resorts in Europe has been shut off to people. You know, there's so many things that are like we're free, not free anymore, and it's a punitive tax because twenty quid for whatever, you know, for a visa, or one hundred and fifty quid for me. It, if I ever want to go back to America, I've got to get a visa these days. Um, so I've I've, I've got to pay one hundred and fifty dollars. And also I've got to get to London, which is £150 on the train, unless I get the mega bus and book it six months in advance. Uh, and then I've got to have an interview and make sure that I'm not an evil person, um, an evil doer. And then I might get a, a, a visa. That's even to change planes. And that could happen to us in Europe. <laughs> you know, They decide that you've got too many speeding fines or something. They can say no when the new regulations come in, uh, where you have the electronic travel authorization, which we wouldn't need if we were members of the EU. And yeah, it might be 15 quid, but that's a lot of money to a family where there's four of them. Each of them needs a one of them. That's 60 quid for all four. And, and that's a lot of money. That, that that could be the same price as a flight if they booked it early on Ryanair or EasyJet. And that's money that is nothing to a millionaire, nothing to, to Farage and Aaron Banks and Richard Tice and Boris Johnson and Rich, Jacob Rees-Mogg. These horrible, smug-faced scumbags who just wallow in money and they, oh, they, they just want to make our lives more difficult. And it's not like they have to pay more because they're rich 
or we have to pay less because we don't have as much money, it's 15 quid. That's the money. It's 150 quid for a visa for America. That's how much it is. And it cuts off so many of the of, of the opportunities that our young people would otherwise have. And that, I, I think, more than anything, is, is the most indefensible part of Brexit. It's, it feels very much like older generations, and not everyone, I know not everyone who is older voted for Brexit. My mum did not vote for Brexit, okay? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that a lot of older people who voted for Brexit voted to take away the rights that they had enjoyed for decades. The rights that they had enjoyed, they, they voted to take that, those rights away from the younger generations without the younger generation's consent. And yeah, that, that's the one that really boils my piss. Um, thank you very much um, to uh, Smile Sauce for the £10 super chat. That's very kind. Thank you. Uh, from Savage Dragon. Thank you. That's really cool. Uh, EU train travel cheaper too, I hear. Yeah, a lot cheaper because we subsidize it in this country. If you get on a, a, Riva, tra- uh, a Riva bus, it's owned by Deutsche Bahn, isn't it? And SNCF have uh, interests in the UK. The, the the yeah the French and the German and the the the, the Dutch national train companies have shares in our train companies and so they make money out of the fact that it's now 106 pounds to get the train from Durham to Liverpool and back 106 pounds wow anyway uh it is coming up to tw- oh my god it's past 10 o'clock uh did you go to Antarctica five pound super chat from Captain Bart Roberts no I didn't because it's not a country. I went to every country. That was the challenge. So every member of the UN, plus Palestine, Kosovo, Western Sahara, Vatican City, um, the other one. <laughs> Did say Taiwan? Um, there was like five of others. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was something where um, there were places like Greenland, Antarctica, uh, the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, uh, Curacao in the the uh, Caribbean that I didn't go to. I didn't go to Montserrat. I didn't go to uh, uh, Guadeloupe. Um, there, there's quite a few, quite a few places that I didn't go to because they weren't countries. I didn't go to French Guiana because part of France. I did go to Suriname though, um, and, uh, and 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 Guyana. Um, let's do the Met- Newcastle Metro system is German owned. Yeah, jazz. It's just. It's bonkers, isn't it? So we're subsidised in the first. Listen, I'm going to do this really, really quickly because I know I've gone over time. Newspapers. Uh, Royals will come back stronger. Um, okay. Uh, pubs close uh, call time at 8pm. A third of landlords forced to close early due to lack of uh, costs and lack of, of, of custom. This is another sad story about the British pub, which has been absolutely decimated by uh, COVID and then Brexit, really, because it's hard to get people to work in the staff because people used to come over from the EU to work as staff in a pub. You're not going to get many people coming over from Pakistan to work in a pub for, for reasons. Um, King's Easter message of unity and hope uh, to nation. Uh, there you go, Easter message. I can't believe it's Easter already. I thought it was a couple of weeks. It's apparently this weekend. Uh, Russell Group gets most of its fees from overseas. This is about universities. We get the most money from overseas because the tuition fees have been stuck at about 10 grand for the last seven years. And although the costs of everything have gone up for these universities, um, it's still 10 grand because it's always said we're going to freeze that. And so the, the way that these universities have got the money get coming in is by giving visas, to, well, not giving visas, but getting overseas students to come over. Uh, but the Tories want to do away with that because they want to be down the immigration figures and they include students in the immigration figures, which is mind blowing because they're only here for a few years. It's not permanent migration. Uh Whatever. Uh, UK's nuclear defence to boost, uh, to prote- protect against Putin. Uh, okay. Uh, and then suspects appear in court accused in a Moscow attack that left 173 dead. Um, they don't look particularly Ukrainian to me, but, uh, you know, what do I know? Uh, China and Russia behind slurs on princess. That's from the, uh, the Telegraph, <laughs> which uh, often slurs uh, the royals, especially if their names are... I don't know, Megan and Harry, I don't know. Uh, and then uh, the star joins the gold rush there because, of course. Um, and then the 14 billion uh, United Kingdom, we give record uh, amount to good causes despite the cost of living crisis. Um, oh, I see, the kind done because we're, we're nice. I thought when I said we, I thought it meant the Metro. 
was like, they're doing all right, aren't they? Bloody hell. 14 billion to give to good causes. But no, it's about us as as a society. Because yes, we are kind. Most people are. The vast majority of people in the world are good. Um, it's just that the, there are a few psychopaths out there who are very charismatic and get people following them off the cliff or to drink the Kool-Aid to go back to Guyana. Um, US and Japan plan security pact upgrade to resist China. Um, yeah, that, that'll go down well until Trump is elected and then all bets are off. Right, thank you very much for joining me for this morning's edition of Morning Brew. Phil will be back tomorrow morning at half nine for Morning Brew. And uh, until then, I'll say thank you very much for watching and uh, sticking with us. Um, we're, we're coming up to our year anniversary of Labour Social. So on Friday, we're going to be having a little bit of a a little bit of a party, a little bit of a shindig, bringing back some old faces. Uh, and uh, yeah, it should be should be cool. So uh, please look out for that. Nine, nine o'clock on Fridays, uh, the, the Labour Social. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't read too many of your chats today. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and read more of them on, on Wednesday when we do all of this again. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for the super chats. Give us a like on the way out. And until next time, I'll say hello, good evening, welcome, and goodbye. Oh, that's the intro, not the outro. Monday mornings, I... Eh?